Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do, I don't like how this one's a little bit slanted. Um, what I'm going to do is show you how to graph uh, our two functions here. Hopefully that looks a little bit better. Hopefully. Um, so what we're going to do is graph two functions by determining the amplitude, the period, uh, x scale. And now we're going to be adding phase shift. And phase shift is going to be shifting the graph left or right here. So um, when we go ahead and have a graph here, here in this case, I have y equals sine of 2x minus pi. And uh, basically, what I'm going to be doing in this case is first doing just like we did before. We need to identify the amplitude, um, the period, as well as the x scale. All right. So let's go and do what we know how to do first here. Um, I'm not going to use. Let's use. Let's use blues again. So amplitude. If you remember, amplitude is the absolute value of a. Okay. And so what I did is I also wrote in the parent graph here y equals sine of x, and also you can see where is a, b, and c. Or where is A, B, and C coming from? It's the absolute value. Amplitude is absolute value of A, when the, which in this case is the absolute value of 1. So it's just going to be 1. So therefore, my graph, um, since I have no vertical transformation, translation here, my graph is going to go from 0 up to 1 and down 1. That's going to be the maximum and the minimum. Uh, to identify my period, that's going to be 2 pi divided by B. Well, in this case, my B here is going to be 2, because that's, remember, B is what is volume B multiplied by your x. So in this case, I have 2 pi divided by 2, which is just going to be pi. Now, the next one is going to be my x scale. And that simply is just going to be my period divided by 4, which in this case is pi divided by 4. Now remember, um, period is going to be how long it takes the graph to complete one revolution, where your x scale is going to be the difference between each of those critical points. We have five critical points within a period. So the distance between each of these tick marks for this example is going to be pi over 4. Now, the one that gets everybody is our phase shift. And you notice here, I haven't graphed where my graph was going to be yet or where my y-intercept is, because I'm not just going to like blindly go ahead and graph them in there. I want to go through it where exactly. Um, I'm still going to represent where the y-intercept is at. But um, it's much easier if you can just kind of go with an open blank slate, so to say. Um, and we're going to do that by knowing our phase shift. So our phase shift, basically what we're going to do for our phase shift is we are going to set our, to do our phase shift, we're going to kind of determine our start and our end. Okay. So to go from the start, basically what we're going to do is take bx minus c and set it equal to 0. Because traditionally, the start has always been at 0, right? where x equals 0. That's what was always your start. So in this case, I have 2x minus pi equals 0. Well, I'll add pi. And I have 2x equals pi divided by 2 divided by 2, x equals pi halves. So what that's going to be telling me is now my starting position is not going to be at when x equals 0. It's going to be when x equals pi halves. Okay? And that's a very, very important thing to understand. We're not starting where x equals 0. We're going to start where x equals pi halves. And then um, the next thing I always like to do is also determine the end. Now, traditionally, you can see our, our end has always been, um, yeah, well, let's actually show where the end would be uh, exactly. Let's just kind of go through this now. If we have the start, we know we're going to have four tick marks, right? So one, two, three, four. Just like this period has one, two, three, four tick marks. Now we know that the x scale between each of these is going to be pi fours, right? So we know the distance here between this and this one is going to be pi fours. So I'm going to do pi halves plus pi fours. Well, multiply this by 2 over 2. Here, that begins 3 fourths. I'm sorry. Multiply by 2 over 2. So that becomes 2 pi over 4 plus pi over 4, which is going to be 3 pi over 4. All right? So now, if you can see, if you can just rewrite these down at fourths, that's really 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4. This is going to be 4 pi over 4. 5 pi over 4, and then 6 pi over 4. And I think it's a lot, of e it's a lot easier to um, keep them as fractions and then reduce them at the end. So that is now one single period. Now let's do the next period. 1, 2, 3, 4. So that would be 7 pi over 4, 8 pi over 4, 9 pi over 4, and 10 pi over 4. OK, so I think it's a lot easier to kind of do it this way. And now what we can do is determine here 
okay, well now I kind of got this pattern. This is really 2 pi over 2. Now let's just go and simplify. Well, instead of 4 pi over 4, we can just represent that as pi. Instead of 6 pi over 4, we could represent that as 3 pi over 2. Instead of 8 pi over 4, we can represent that as 2 pi. And instead of 10 pi over 4, we could represent that as 5, 5 pi over 2. OK. So, um, so now, uh, now let's just go ahead and graph, right? Now, remember, the x-axis is still here. We still have, or I'm sorry, the x-axis, the y-axis. The y-axis is still here. And if you were probably using the scaling, the y-axis would probably be right around here. But again, that's not where we're starting. We're starting at x equals pi half. So we're not starting when x equals 0 anymore, because the graph has now been shifted to the right. So remember, our period, though, is still going to be up one, or I'm sorry, I'm not a period. Our amplitude is still going to be up to 1, negative 1. So it's important to have either your y-axis noted on your graph somewhere so you can see where the amplitude, how you're going to apply that. So again, we're going to be starting here, which just like we started at the, when x equals 0, we always started at the intercept. So then we're going to start here, go up to our maximum, go down to our intercept, down to our minimum, and up back to our max. And that is going to complete our one period. And I was supposed to cross there. Then we just continue the pattern. Go back up, go down, middle, up. Okay, And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you complete um, two periods. Or that's how you complete two periods. Um, oh, shoot. That's not right. I did something wrong. Pi over 4. Oh, yeah, OK, that's right. Yeah, pi halves plus pi. OK, we're good. I was, trying, I was thinking of pi, and I'm like, oh, well, pi was a period. But no, it's a period. It's pi distance from pi halves. If you add pi, if you add pi to pi halves, you get 3 pi over 2. So you're good. OK. Um, so now let's go look at the next example. So my next example here, again, we're just going to go through the exact same points here. We want to find the amplitude, the period, the x scale, and then the phase shift. So amplitude is going to be the absolute value of a, which in this case is the absolute value of 1 half, which is just 1 half. Again, we'll do the amplitude kind of at the end. Uh, my x scale, all right, that's going to x scale, I'm sorry, period. I want to find the period, which is going to be 2 pi divided by b. So b in this case is going to be 1. So I just have 2 pi divided by 1, which is 2 pi. Then my x scale is going to be 2 pi divided, or my period, divided by 4, which in this case is going to be 2 pi divided by 4 which is pi halves. So therefore, I basically have a period and x scale exactly the same here as this. Um, and then my phase shift, again, I, I'm just going to use the exact same thing here. Um, my phase shift, I'm just going to go from, I think it's easier rather than doing the start and the end, I think it's easier just to take your start and determine what it is and then use the x scale to find the next two points. So my phase shift here is going to be um, bx minus c equals 0, because that's what our traditional starting point will be. So that's going to be x plus 1 half equals 0, or pi halves. So therefore, I subtract pi halves, and I get x equals negative pi halves. So if I was going to start, let's just pretend here's 0. Okay? Well, Rather than starting, usually when that's at 0, I started at 0, right? Well, now I'm going to start at, actually, what I'll do here is I am going to graph this two phases to the left. So let's pretend here's 0. Here would be pi halves. So therefore, now what I'm going to do, actually, let's do pi halves. So now that's negative pi halves. Actually, yeah, that's kind of confusing. Don't do that. All right, let's just pretend here's 0. We're going to do a period to the right and to the period to the left. Instead of starting at 0, I am now, so here would be pi halves, right? And we would tr do our traditional one. Now we're going to start at negative pi halves. Now remember, our x scale here is still, um, our x scale is still pi halves. So therefore, if here's my start, my next critical point is going to be at 0. Next critical point will be at pi halves. And then the next one after that would be at adding pi halves, which in this case would be pi. 
Next one would be 3 pi over 2. And then add the next one would be 2 pi. So I actually can go through this. Uh, my period here is uh, amplitude is 1 half. So let's say here's 1 and there's negative 1. So half of that would be 1 half here, negative 1 half. So here's going to be my start. right? Here's where I'm starting. So I'll do one period to the right, which would be up. Here's a critical point. Next critical point. Oh, actually, I don't even get to that one. Next critical point, and then next critical point. Okay, that completes one period. As you can see, it's the exact same as that. Um, I obviously I know my scaling. My scaling is a little bit different. But then I'm going to do instead of doing one period to the right, which would continue adding one halves or pi halves. Now I'm going to go to the left. So if I just continue subtracting here, that would be at negative pi, negative three pi over two negative 2 pi, and this would be negative 5 pi over 2. So now let's just continue our pattern. So now we'd go down, intercept, max, intercept. And again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just following the pattern that I've been given from my parent graph up here, is just following this curve. And then the main important thing is making sure that, you know, you guys see that here's 0, right? But we're not starting at 0 anymore. Right? Because the graph has now been shifted pi halves to the left. But the scaling is exactly the same, so therefore we can graph it and then keep it to look like the same. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph a uh, sine graph um, with a period and x scale as well as phase shift. Thanks.